Okay, so what do we have here? Well, obviously we have a triangle, and the question is, is this a right triangle? So in other words, is one of the angles, i.e. this angle right here, 90 degrees? So that is the question, and if you uh, forgot what a right triangle uh, is, again, it is a triangle uh, that one of the angles is 90 degrees. Remember uh, as well that the sum total of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, but right triangles are very special triangles in geometry. So hopefully you know a little bit about right triangles. But uh, anyways, if you think you can answer this question, go ahead and put that uh, answer into the comment section, but back up your answer. In other words, tell me how you came to that conclusion. So whether you answer this correct and you just put down a simple yes or no, and this was an actual uh, exam question, you wouldn't really get any points for guessing correct. You have to back up your conclusions. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm gonna walk through how we can prove uh, whether this is in fact a right triangle or not using two different ways. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math, okay? Whatever you do, please do not give up. Let me tell you the three things you need to be successful in math. One, you gotta be willing to work hard. So if you've been trying to take shortcuts in learning math, like, ah, I don't really wanna learn, you know, put in that much work, I just wanna do the bare minimum, that doesn't work, okay? So just drop that strategy. Be willing to invest, you know, um, the study time you know, take notes, do all your homework, etc. You got to work hard. The second thing you need is encouragement, and this is really important for those of you out there that are, you know, struggling. Okay, maybe you've been doing well, and now you're running to a point where you're having a real tough time with math. You got to be able to uh, know that if you keep going, you can be successful. All right. So I'm telling you right now, don't quit. But this is the most important aspect of learning math. You need great math instruction. You need a great teacher. You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. And this is where a lot of people get frustrated learning math. They'll, uh, you know, be learning from someone or something. I'm not trying to knock any teachers out there as well, but if you're sitting in your class and you don't understand what's being taught, you're not going to learn, okay? Because math is a technical subject and it can be taught in a technical way. But the way I like to teach math is to explain things in an easy to understand way where all people can get what's going on without watering down with uh, what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the ASVAB, GED, SAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. It's critical you have great notes. If you do not, you need to learn how to take great notes, but in the meantime, you can use mine if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this. Right triangle or not, what do you think? Well, let me show you the answer. Yes, indeed, this is a right triangle. Okay, so if you got that right, that's excellent, okay? But here's where, uh, this is the part of your answer I'm more interested in. How did you uh, back up your conclusion? So if you said yes, I would say, wonderful, why did you say that? Okay, why did you, um, you know, conclude that this, in fact that this is a right triangle? And if you said, well, I just guessed I had a 50-50 chance, you know what, if this was a multiple choice question, I would say you did the right thing. You should always guess uh, on, you know, a math test or <laughs> just a simple uh, strategy, you know, for success. If you have a multiple choice uh, exam and you're not going to get uh, deducted any points for guessing, you should always guess, right? All right, so anyways, if you just took a shot and said, yes, it is, that's great. But if you have a conclusion there, all right, that's even better. But let's go ahead and celebrate your success with a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars for either being smart enough to guess on this question or knowing exactly how to back up your answer. So I'm going to show you two ways you can approach this um, problem. And basically, 
one approach is like a long, more painful approach, okay? But it is still a good approach. And then there is a second way you could prove this. It's much, much easier. I'll show you both techniques. Let's go ahead and start with the first uh, strategy. And this is the long route, okay? It's like two roads, the, the long road and short road. Well, this would be the longer road to conclude uh, whether the fact this triangle is a right triangle or not. Now, if you are dealing with a right triangle, okay, if you have a right triangle, then this holds true, okay? So in other words, if you have a right triangle, then this is true, okay? Now, what is this? Well, this is the Pythagorean theorem, all right? And it states that it's the relationships of the sides of a right triangle holds uh, true. This relationship holds true. Now, C... Okay, here happens to be the longest side of a right triangle. So let's suppose this was right. Well, just by looking at this, this would probably be the longest side. Okay, so we can kind of look and, of course, we can kind of like just compare these respective algebraic expressions as well. But this is the longest side. So this would be our C. So if we square this, all right, that would be like A squared plus this thing squared, okay, should be equal to this thing squared. All right, so you're like, well, all right, uh, we're going to have to do, you know, a good a bit of algebra to see if this is true. In other words, we're going to take this and we're going to square it. We're going to add that, the results of that, to this squared, okay? And we're going to see if that's going to be equal to this thing squared. If that is the case, then in fact, uh, this is a right triangle because this relationship only holds true in a right triangle. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. And this is going to be a considerable amount of algebra. Um, you know, it's not that difficult of algebra, but there's, you know, a lot of number crunching. So this is what we want to show. So this would be like our a squared plus b squared is equal to our c squared. Again, remember c squared right here, 4x plus 2, is the longest side of this triangle. Okay, so what we're going to do is test to see if this holds out. In other words, when we do all this algebra, we're looking to see if the left-hand side will actually be equal to the right-hand side. If that is true, then in fact, this is a right triangle. So let's go ahead and uh, do this math. So 2x plus 1 squared, we'll go ahead and just write that right here. 2x plus 1 squared is, of course, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. And you can see all that lovely uh, uh, multiplication right there. Hopefully, you understand the FOIL uh, method. And here is the answer. Okay, so we'll kind of break this up in three stages. So this is the first stage. We'll do this next, and then we'll do this next, and we'll put all our answers together, and we'll take a look at what we have because there is, again, a good amount of algebra here. So let's take a look at doing this next. Okay, so we're going to check on uh, 2x plus 1 times the square root of 3 squared. All right, what's that equal to? Well, that's 2x plus 1 times the square root of 3 times 2x plus 1 times the square root of 3. Now, remember, in multiplication, order doesn't make a difference. 1 times 7 times 3 is equal to uh, 7 times 3 times 1. Okay, so we could shuffle things around. So I'm going to put these two square root of 3s next to one another. And then we'll, I'll put the 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 next to one another. So that's going to give me 2x plus 1 squared. I actually just figured out what that was, right? 2x plus 1 squared. Uh, i.e. 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 is this, all right? 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. So I could just use that same result again right there. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 9 or 3. So that's going to be 3 times this. And, of course, that would give me this uh, expression right here, 12x squared plus 12x plus 3. Okay, so now let's move on to this last piece. This is our c squared, uh, 4x plus 2 squared. So that would be 4x plus 2 times 4x plus 2. And when we do all this lovely math, we get this expression right here. If you want to see the specific uh, algebra steps, you can just pause the video and take a look at this. But what we're doing here is the FOIL technique, right? First, outer, inner, last. Hopefully, um, you know, this is stuff that you know. Now, if you're kind of like confused with the algebra and the geometry, then I'm going to suggest a couple uh, different possible courses here for you. So uh, probably like my geometry course would make sense because you take geometry after algebra and it's typically the way it's taught. So if you need um, help with like say the Pythagorean theorem and some of the other things I'm going to be talking about here in a second, then check out my geometry course. But if you're struggling on the algebra, check out my algebra one course. 
Okay, so now we have uh, all three pieces here. Remember, 4x plus 2 squared was c squared. Okay, that's what we just did right here. And then these uh, terms, this was our b squared. And this over here was our a squared. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and just pl uh, put this all into its respective uh, pieces into our uh, Pythagorean theorem here, right? Again, this would be a squared plus b squared, and this is our c squared. So we have all the answers here. And sometimes you're going to have to, um, you know, give yourself as, as much room as possible on your paper when you're doing these type of problems. There's a lot going on. So we figured out with 2x plus 1 squared, it's this. We figured out with uh, 2x plus 1 times square root of 3 squared is, it's this. And we know what 4x plus 2 squared is this. So now we're going to add up this side of the equation and see if we get this side. All right, so let's go into that now. And you can see by combining like terms, 4x squared and 12x squared, that would give me 16x squared. 4x and 12x gives me 16x. 1 and 4 gives me 4. Let's see here. Does this side equal to this side? Well, they look pretty much identical to me, so therefore we kind of validated by using the Pythagorean theorem that, in fact, the uh, this particular triangle is a right triangle. So that is one approach. Um, and again, I kind of um, am calling this the long and painful road. All right, but a good road. All right, it still gets you to point A to point B, which is proving your conclusions. But let's take a look at a better way to do this problem. And hopefully this is what you recognized um, as the best approach. So here's a problem we're trying to determine whether this is a right triangle or not. So um, there's two types of triangles you need to really know. There's special right triangles, okay? And one of these is the 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. It involves the square root of three, okay? And this comes up on a lot of different type of tests, not only in geometry, but standardized tests like the SAT, ACT, GED, you know, so you really need to know these special right triangle relationships. But basically, here, uh, by the way, the other uh, special right triangle I need to know is the 45, 45, 90. But here is the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay, so whatever this side is, our smallest side x, the uh, uh, if we double that, by the way, this is 60 degrees here, and this would be 30 degrees right there. Okay, so this is what our triangle looks like. So our smallest side doubled is the hypotenuse. Okay, so whatever our smallest side here, if it's x, our hypotenuse, our longest side is 2x, and then our middle side, okay, the one with the middle length in between, is whatever this side is right here, x times the square root of 3. So anything that fits this pattern is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's go ahead and see if our question fits that pattern. Okay, so here we have our small side, 2x plus 1, is the hypotenuse here double this? Well, let's just double 2x plus 1. If we do this, we're going to get what? 2 times 2x, that's 4x, and then 2 times this 1 is 2, so it is, okay? 2x plus 1 uh, uh, times 2 is, in fact, this. And then we have the smaller side, 2x plus 1, times the square root of 3, so this triangle fits that 30, 60, 90 degree pattern, all right? So in other words, 90 degrees right here, indicating that this is a right triangle. Okay, so again, you always want to try to work smarter, not harder in mathematics and in life, but uh, here's the deal, right? You know, uh, to do a problem like this, it's good to know both approaches, right? You need to, you know, think about how can I solve this? How can I justify my conclusions? And sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll um, you know, think of different approaches, okay? So, you know, don't think too long, uh, you know, when you're like, how do I prove this? Just try a, a particular way to prove something. In other words, if you're thinking, well, I could use the Pythagorean theorem, or maybe this is a special right triangle, right? So maybe you're thinking 30, 60, 90. If you have both, the, both of, those, uh, of those thoughts, okay, you should always try the one that you think is going to maybe go easier for you, right? But if that doesn't work, if you struggle with that, you have a backup plan uh, to kind of uh, justify your conclusions. So this is a, kind of the essence of mathematics is trying to prove things. And there's not only, you know, generally speaking, there's not one way to prove an answer is correct. Okay, so hopefully this helped you out, you know, again, with uh, these concepts, 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle, Pythagorean theorem. This is, 
you know, absolutely fundamental high school level geometry. So make sure you understand this stuff, especially, uh, you know, if you're at that high school level or college level of mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.